Dr. Tim and Court, the show where we break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. I'm your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we are talking about My Nightmare Landlord. My Nightmare Landlord stars Caroline Harris, Ignacio Matina, Sinead Darcy, and Spencer Blecko. I don't know if I'm saying any of these names right. I don't know. On the show, we either pour it up, which means yes, or put a cork in it, which means no thank you. So, what are we going to do to this movie? Pour it up! Now, if you haven't seen the movie yet and you want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to go ahead and hit the pause button and come on back because I'm about to break down this movie with a quick recap. Starting now. The movie begins with a dead woman in a bathtub full of rose petals. Romantic! Cut to Lydia, a college student looking for a new apartment after a breakup with a creepy ex-boyfriend named Tim. Tim freaks out a potential landlord by stalking Lydia, and she is essentially homeless. While running through the rain, Lydia takes cover in an apartment building and runs into a shirtless, hunky landlord. Upgrade! He shows her an apartment and Lydia takes it on the spot, moving in with her cat, Pumpkin, and very little luggage. The hunky landlord's name is Drew, and he, unfortunately, has a shirt on. He shows Lydia the features of the apartment, including turning off the lights, which sends Lydia into a well-directed and well-acted depiction of a panic attack. Lydia is deathly afraid of the dark. Later, Drew is lurking through her apartment. Lydia is paralyzed with fear. Drew turns on the lights, and they get some wine. They talk about past relationships, and wine quickly turns to dinner. And dinner turns into sexy time. No. Lydia pumps the brakes because she is insane and wants to take things slow. Seriously, girl, how could you kick Ignacio Montaigne out of bed? Drew sets up cameras and lurks around with his shirt off. Then he takes Lydia to a play and dinner. On the rooftop with champagne, he gives her a charm bracelet. And one of the charms includes a flashlight. It is very thoughtful. Even though he's a stalker, I think he might be my dream man. Drew starts following Lydia at work and becomes jealous of a TA named Brad. Drew becomes very possessive and emotionally unhinged. Lydia senses this and tells him that she just wants to be friends. Drew won't take no for an answer and tapers with her alarm clock, getting her fired from her job. He texts Brad from Lydia's phone to end things and then books a flight to France randomly on Lydia's credit card while she's sleeping. It's creepy. A neighbor in the apartment is suspicious of Drew and warns Lydia. Drew overhears the conversation with a giant teddy bear and then he kills a woman while he's shirtless. If I could pick a way to go, it would be this. Drew immediately regrets killing the lady and hits himself in the head and cries. Then he takes a bubble bath for no reason. Enjoy this slowed down bubble bath. Yes, bubble bath. Lydia's ex-boyfriend Tim returns and he is newly sober. He doesn't stay that way for long because Drew hits him in the face with a sledgehammer and kills him. Lydia sees Drew's apartment door opened and sneaks in. She finds surveillance video of her apartment. Drew catches her and ties her up, forcing her to have a romantic dinner with him. Lydia eventually frees herself and calls 911, but she's still locked in the apartment. To unlock the door, she downloads an app and types in her own name as the password and unlocks the doors. She doesn't get that far and is thrown back in the bathtub with the lights off. Her redheaded best friend, Kaylee, notices extremely ridiculous grammatical errors in a fake text sent from Lydia's phone. A college-educated woman would not type that way. Kaylee calls the cop, who poorly searched Drew's home. Lydia eventually saves herself by overcoming her fear and using the little light on her charm bracelet to signal for help. Lydia and the redheaded best friend become roommates as they should have all along. And that It's my sexy, I mean, my nightmare landlord. Top-notch Lifetime production. It was very suspenseful, actually very scary. And the actress did a wonderful job. Caroline Harris, when she was showing that she had the uh, fear of the dark, I forget what that's called in like science terms, truly see tears like running down her face of terror. Also, Ignacio with the shirt off the whole movie, you gotta pour it up for that. I mean, this man has an amazing body and he's got the talent to back it up. So why not? It's like every day he like walked into his trailer and had like, Oh, I'm wearing no shirt again. The bathtub scene, the ladder scene, the killing of the old lady scene, all with a shirt off. I also liked that it was like a love gone wrong. Lydia realized that Drew was like 
obsessed with her. She pumped the brakes on that really hard, and that is so true to life. She just got in a situation that she couldn't get out of. Also, the redheaded best friend coming to Lydia's rescue at the end. That's what a best friend in a Lifetime movie should be. They're so thankful she didn't die, because she totally would have died in a normal Lifetime movie. Also, written by a woman, so we love that. Naomi L. Selfman, props to you awesome writing. Overall, a good lifetime thriller. Get yourself some wine, have a good time. Now it is time for the Minority Report, the segment where we talk about representation in TV movies and why it matters. This is an excellent example of how to put POCs into movies. We had a black leading lady, which doesn't happen a lot anywhere in the TV movie landscape, but they're totally bankable stars and they should be cast more often. We also had the TA Brad and a real estate agent. And that wraps up this episode. Don't forget to check out our podcast and our website, lifetimeuncourt.com. Go watch these movies so you don't have to, but if you do, we'd love to hear from you. You can subscribe to this channel and leave a comment below. Don't forget to like the video and you can follow me at Patrick Miguel or the show at lifetimeuncourt. Tell you friends. Tell everybody we're doing it. Suggest a movie in the comments below or just say hi. Okay, that's it. Goodbye.